Welcome to another one of your flip lectures. Today we're going to talk about the role of the home fronts, women, and African Americans in the Civil War. We've talked before about the idea of the Civil War as a total war, that it's really going to affect kind of every aspect of life in the United States kind of during this conflict. And this is especially true in the Confederate States. In the Confederate States, a lot of there was a problem with shortages during the war. Kind of, we talked about the idea that the South had fewer resources, fewer people, and if you add that together with a war effort, it means that for the people at home, the people not in the army, and the people in the army, there's never going to be enough resources. There are especially food shortages kind of during the Civil War, and a lot of those farms, those big plantations try to change from cotton to food production. But what they also found is, with a large amount of people kind of going to join the war, there were also labor shortages. There weren't enough people kind of to make sure that all of the tasks were getting done. Um, the Union Army also targeted their transportation system, and it ultimately collapsed. Those few railroads were kind of very easily destroyed in a lot of places, and so that again makes life even more difficult for people living in the South. On top of that, the Union army would occupy some of these territories that the southern army was simply unable to defend. And ultimately all these shortages and all these struggles on the home front are going to really hurt southern morale for the war. There's actually a lot of stories of Confederate soldiers deserting the army in order to go home and try to take care of their family because of these shortages. So in this sense, the Civil War is a total war and that it really affects everybody living in the southern states. Here's a political cartoon from the day that basically lampoons Jefferson Davis as the devil, asking Southerners to again kind of do without, do with let. In 1863, in the capital, in the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, there were large-scale riots that came to be known as bread riots, where women and others marched through the streets chanting bread, breaking windows, and looting. And so, as we kind of we can kind of see from this that kind of these shortages they're really going to have a huge impact on the lives of the people living, to the point where they're willing to riot in the streets of Richmond. Another consequence of the war is the large-scale destruction of the South. Most of the war is, takes place in the South, and the Union armies really kind of destroyed large parts of the South. You see here, kind of southern cities are reduced almost to rubble by the war. Farmland destroyed, um, entire crops destroyed or taken, and so what you have here is really the destruction of half of the country as a result of the Civil War. In the North, it's a little bit different. In the Union, there's actually an economic boom because high demand for war materials means that there's going to have to be an increase in production to, in order to basically meet that demand. Uh, the North had a lot of banks, and so they were able to kind of fund all this industry, fund the war effort for the North, and they also had new technology, new farm technology, new factory technology, actually led to the North experiencing a large economic boom during this time. And this was also important for women, as women kind of, in the North especially kind of move into the public sector to meet demand for labor. They work in factories, they take over farms, they serve as head of households and businesses. And this is really kind of an opportunity for women to kind of expand beyond those roles that we talked about women had kind of been assigned to. That's going to be important kind of when we talk about after the war and the women's rights movement. There was also a lot of advances in medicine kind of during the Civil War. But first off, disease was actually the number one killer in the Civil War, not battles or anything else. Kind of unsanitary conditions, large numbers of people staying together, meant diseases spread very rapidly. When there were battle casualties, these often resulted in amputations, something that, while grisly to us, actually saved a lot of lives. And medicine advanced a lot during this time because of kind of the challenges of having to treat wounded soldiers. And so there was, and so a lot of things changed kind of during the Civil War with medicine. Here's a couple of pictures of some artifacts. These are actually the toolkits that the Civil War surgeons would have. As you see, kind of a lot of knives, a lot of saws, um, in order to kind of dig out bullets, amputate, and try to basically keep these people alive. Here's a picture of a doctor kind of looking after a patient. Here's a picture of a couple of Union soldiers who, though they lost limbs, did actually end up surviving, something that may not have happened in previous conflicts. Here is a hospital. 
so I want to kind of talk for a second about Nursi in the Civil War. Kind of as the Civil War got started, the first female doctor in the United States, first woman to ever get a medical degree by the name of Elizabeth Blackwell, started an organization called the United States Sanitary Commission that organized large numbers of women in order to basically serve as battlefield nurses, learn medicine, as well as create and, and provide medical supplies like bandages and, things, and blankets and things like that. And so Elizabeth Blackwell kind of starts this U.S. Sanitary Commission, and a lot of people are going to end up kind of serving in the Civil War as women. Uh, other famous women who served in the war, Clara Barton, who is known as the Angel of the Battlefield, who would go out in the middle of kind of combat or shortly thereafter and try to basically treat as many people as she could. She eventually went on to found the American Red Cross, an organization that we all kind of still know today, but it dates back to the Civil War. There's also a woman by the name of Mary Ann Bickerdyke, who, who was in charge of kind of a lot of the nursing in the field hospitals, and even General William Tecumseh Sherman. By the end of the war, one of the top-ranking generals said, she ranks me, saying that this woman was actually much more important to the war effort than William Tecumseh Sherman thought that he was, and he listened to her, not the other way around. For the Confederate States of America, it was a lot more unofficial, but people such as Kate Cumming would actually leave their homes when battles were near and go out to the battlefield to basically try to help these soldiers. And here are kind of some pictures of these nurses in the Civil War. Here's a painting of Clara Barton, the angel of the battlefield, who would just go out in the middle of battlefields to the point where she actually got shot at a number of times. But she was, she was very, very famous by the end of the war, and people rallied behind her when she started the Red Cross. Here's a picture of Elizabeth Blackwell, who was the first female doctor in the United States history. And so the overall impact of the war on women is actually significant, though not many women fight. Some women actually dress as men and fight. The key here is opportunity, that women are given a chance to break down many of the ideas about kind of true womanhood, that the woman's place of value is only in the home. In the Civil War, women go out into public life. They run businesses, farms, serve as nurses. And this contributes to the women's movement after the war, because women will point to the Civil War and say, we are just as capable as men. There's one more group that is going to make advances during the Civil War, and that is black soldiers, both free and former slave. And Frederick Douglass, in encouraging his fellows to join up with the Union Army, said, Once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters U.S. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket, and there is no power on earth or under the earth which can deny that he has earned the right of citizenship in the United States. And black soldiers in the Union really do kind of prove, in many ways, prove to a lot of people that they are just as worthy of U.S. citizenship as the whites who are fighting. Initially, blacks were not allowed to enlist, but Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation allows freed slaves and freed blacks to enlist in the Union Army. By the end of the war, over 200,000 are going to end up serving in the Army and Navy. The most famous of all these regiments is the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. It was a segregated regiment in that it was all black, though all the officers were white. But this 54th Massachusetts gained a lot of fame by being involved in several large battles, including one, including an unsuccessful assault on Fort Wagner in 1863. Fort Wagner was never taken in the entirety of the Civil War. The 54th Massachusetts got as close as anybody ever did. And the courage and heroism that this 54th Massachusetts showed really proved to a lot of people that these black soldiers were more than capable because there were doubts. Remember, kind of the attitudes of racism and slavery were in the North as well as the South. In the New York Tribune, after the Battle of Fort Wagner wrote that it is not too much to say that if this Massachusetts 54th had faltered when its trial came, 200,000 African Americans for whom it was a pioneer would never have been put in the field. But it did not falter. It made Fort Wagner such a name to African Americans as Bunker Hill has been for years to white Yankees. And ultimately, we remember the 54th Massachusetts kind of even today as a reminder that when given the opportunity, people, no matter kind of what, what kind of racial or other barriers they face, 
can be successful and can prove themselves and be good American citizens. And so the Civil War is not only a time of conflict between North and South, it's also a time for many kind of traditionally disadvantaged groups to prove, to prove themselves and break down discriminating barriers in American society. If you want to do a little bit more, a little extra credit over the weekend, here's a couple other topics you could look into. If you want to look into spies in the Civil War, they played a very significant role. The role of women in a little bit more detail, the role of black soldiers in more detail, the home fronts in more detail, or there's a guerrilla war that's happening in Missouri that's also very interesting. You can research any of these things and create a short PowerPoint presentation or an essay to basically share what you have learned.